under assault right now. It's not alarmism, it's not exaggeration. This type of weather modification puts out chemicals and toxins, some known, some not known. Many people who try to debate this issue, if they ask you why they should believe this is going on, we have film of it happening, end of the argument. That's it. There's no debate, no discussion, this is not speculation. Also indicative of different materials being expelled from different portions of the aircraft. So again, this amounts to weather warfare, period. The U.S. has historically engaged in weather warfare around the globe. This is historical fact. We have data going back to Vietnam, 1968, Project Popeye. Uh, 1976, the U.N. passed resolutions forbidding weather modification in wartime. So again, this is not speculation. We, have, we live in a society that's been trained to shut down when they hear the word conspiracy theory. They've been conditioned pretty well. But the bottom line is this, is, this is the issue that can't be ignored any longer. People can ignore Kennedy, people can ignore false flag events like Vietnam and even whatever happened on 9-11, but this issue can't be ignored. When In the North State, for example, we took variants of different planes, the different configurations of spray apparatus. This is an ongoing experiment. There's likely many different configurations. We see aircraft trails that have different color composition. So this is an ongoing experiment of which we are all a part, like it or not. More configurations. Obviously, there's a whole lot of planes with a whole lot of tanks doing a whole lot of something. So uh, this kind of footage should not be ignored. Clearly, these are what would appear to be passenger planes, most of them with windows. So uh, there appear to be many different types of aircrafts involved in the spraying activities. This is what we have. Again, global geoengineering, the ever-changing experiment. And we are, again, part of that experiment. Russian scholar warns of secret U.S. climate change weapon. We have Russia engaged in this as well. We also have China. And this is one of the reasons why it's so hard to get any sort of mainstream coverage, because the big players are all involved up to their eyeballs. So uh, that, that's one of the reasons the uh, media coverage is so sparse. But it's coming. What do weather weapons do? They wreak havoc in countries without anybody knowing they're even under assault. In the case of floods, droughts, all of this is a form of weather weaponry and weather warfare. And there is no arguing that we are all a part of weather warfare when our climate is being impacted the way it is right now. Again, countries around... My barium was 150 in February. Now it's 190. I also have low blood platelets, um, which is a problem with clotting, okay? I also have rainwater. If anybody would like to volunteer to drink some. Anybody want to drink some rainwater? It has aluminum in it. I'm going to tell you how much it has in it. 321 parts per billion, 7.4 for barium, and 5.5 for strontium. Trevor Bajoria of the Department of Environmental Quality says this is safe to drink. Anybody want to drink some? I don't. I don't drink the tap water. I don't eat those nuts that you refer to. I don't work in mining. I stay at home. I am disabled and getting more disabled because of what is in our atmosphere. Okay, now this is gonna end up in litigation, just so you understand me. Everybody here is gonna be held accountable, including the DEQ and including the State Health Department. Something wrong is going on. You need to look at Public Law 105 Dash 85, Google it. We have all given consent for our government to do testing on us, and they are doing it. That is why cancer, diabetes is off the charts, and many other diseases. I didn't come to the Golden Valley to die, but that's what I see when I walk around this town and see elderly and young people that look like walking zombies. Everybody's got heart problems, lung problems. You all are sick. How many here have gotten their blood tested? Are you telling me this blood test is a farce from a laboratory and from my doctor? People in my profession. I work for the federal government for 12 years, and uh, it is my line of work. We are the ones that should be going out there calling people out. What is this? I mean, you can't work 
in my field, which is industrial hygiene. I'm an industrial hygienist and an environmental specialist. So how can you overlook this? You, you cannot deny the evidence. Just do your own testing. It's the history of weather weaponry. I mean, you can take away people's monetary system. You can take away people's rights. But you take their food and you disable their ecosystem. That's the number one way to handicap people. And they've done it since the 40s. It's not new. Also seeing how um, it started out to be a, a government program and then noticing that it is an, a, a way for private corporations to profit off this, whether it's controlling uh, agriculture, uh, you know, profiting. There are certain events, you know, you lose money on if, if it rains. or So knowing that you can kind of predict and control the weather, there's money there. I've also, you know, heard it could be tied to Agenda 21, but for me, it's not about why. It's just stopping it. It sprayed people. Um, I'm sure you've heard the St. Louis story. They did yeah. biological testing. So if the government is capable of doing that, why is it so hard for people to believe? And I don't know if you've heard about David Keith, but he's actually a geoengineer, Canadian. Uh, he works at Harvard. He just wrote a new book on climate engineering. And inadvertently, he's brought more awareness to this because I feel they're getting ready to admit it. And they're trying to sell it to us, you know. It's kind of like they sell vaccines to us. They sell fluoride to us. You know, fluoride is a, is a mining waste product. Well, how can we make that good, you know, put it in your water? So I think that they're trying to now kind of admit it and act like they're going to start doing it. And they've already been doing it. A public health problem in Wabe County and in several parts of Arizona. We require you, okay, you have the authority and the means to fulfill your legal and moral obligation to investigate the source of the toxins that citizens are being exposed to at extreme levels, to the degree that laboratory blood tests of different citizens are registering consistently alarming results, including 12,000% above normal maximum levels of barium, a chemical not found normally in a natural environment. About a couple of months ago, a Golden Valley resident Mr. Alan De Chico. He didn't feel good, he's been very sick, and he did a very several type of lab test. Uh, this blood test comprehended also, uh, comprehended also blood, uh, barium, testing for barium and aluminum. The results came back. The maximum level of uh, barium was supposed to be between 4 and 10, and his blood results came back for, with just 150. And I'm saying just is sarcastic over a thousand percent above was supposed to be the maximum. And the people in the area, they're not really feeling good, especially elder people. And uh, bottom line, they did the same test for barium and aluminum. Well, about 15 people, exactly, uh, excuse me, 17 people, they did this test, this sort of a project. And we have 87% of them came back with the results of barium in their blood. It was between 500% above to 20,000% above the maximum. For example, we have a lady in Golden Valley that uh, her blood test results came back with a level of 250. Remember, the maximum was supposed to be between 5, 4 and 10. Uh, where is the barrier from? We have no idea. Or we know that we drink different sources of water. We all test our water. Uh, personally, myself, I drink from a well, and we test our well water. There is no barrier. Most of the people, they've been found positive with this barrier. They come from... Uh, they drink water from county sources or from uh, city sources, so the water is clean. We live in a different environment. We don't share the same roofs, the same household. We also eat different food. You breathe and the same point, air. This is not just a fancy word. This is a very scary, poisoning element that on the long distance can destroy your immune system, can create some sort of several problems, miscarriages, and especially in the elders, and people with pre-existing condition can be deadly. We demand today, in front of God, in front of us, the rest of the citizen, people that elected you, taxpayer, and also in front of the next generation, we demand that you, elected official, public servant, don't forget also, you have now the duty to investigate. I include it for you, include for you in these letters is down to about 20 percent of normal except for pest species like ants uh, we're seeing a loss of the major bird species and as the gentleman said 
the ecosystem is unraveling, and Audubon's been telling you that for years. The materials that are going into the environment right now, aluminum oxide nanoparticles and barium nanoparticles, these just happen to be the same materials that they use in nanothermate explosives. And so when this stuff settles down out of the air into the environment, it is small enough to be absorbed through the root structure of the trees and the forest. And so when there's a forest fire, and there will be a forest fire, those fires burn dramatically hotter. The point is that the, the, the cost of firefighting, the cost in the, in the healthcare system have nearly doubled in the last 10 years. The amount of acreage is lost because of fires. The impact on human health is dramatic. I personally tested uh, water and aluminum and I found aluminum had 47 times the normal expected amounts. Uh, strontium had 10 to 20 times the amounts. Barium was 20 times. This is what the stuff looks like here. I collected, it looks, most people just think it's a cobweb, but I tested it, it has outrageous amounts of barium, strontium, and aluminum, but they destroy the sample, so I'm not letting this get away from me. Since the early 1990s, it's been partially declassified, and I'm about to go over it, that major Western governments have been secretly adding to jet fuel a whole host of radioactive isotopes, aluminum dioxide, the list goes on and on, to manipulate the weather on this planet. And when the general public brings it up, they just say, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist, despite the fact that most of this is hiding in plain view. They kept the Manhattan Project secret. They kept the Tuskegee experiment secret. They've kept literally hundreds of different projects secret until the establishment feels like telling us they were doing it later. In the public documents dealing with weather manipulation, geoengineering, or terraforming, they say it's being done for our own good and repair of the atmosphere. But the scientists, meteorologists, astrophysicists, and others that I've talked to have said what they're spraying and releasing would actually eat holes in the atmosphere and damage the soils of the planet. So let me now race through for you the over... 50 or so documents I have here in front of us admitting the geoengineering program that's going on. Council on Foreign Relations, 2008. Geoengineering workshop on planetary scale geoengineering. This is already going on. It's a multi-hundred page report. Go read it. Admitting this is going on. But then they make jokes on the nightly news when I talk about this. Here's a, another report out of Wired Magazine. Earth dimming skies before and after. Admitting that condensation trails from jet aircraft since the early 1990s has dimmed the planet upwards of 30%. That's from 2009. Pretty darn important. Here's another article. Can a million tons of sulfur dioxide combat climate change? That's their cover for this. And Bill Gates gets billions in taxpayer money a year to carry out these secret projects. He's just one part of it. Here's an Infowars.com article with the link to the National Patent Office. Spraying the skies, 1975, U.S. patent for powdered contrail generation. And you look at what they're releasing now in the atmosphere, what's being picked up, it's exactly that. The, the airlines don't even know. It's at the major jet fuel manufacturers. There's more than 50 patents on this alone for geoengineering. BBC, you notice I'm going through one stack here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine more stacks. BBC, why the sun seems to be dimming. Man-made chemtrails. This is a key article from the Pentagon. Weather as a force multiplier, owning the weather by 2025, 1996. Dealing with manipulation of the weather. Department of Defense weather programs, breaking down the control of hurricanes, everything that's been going on since the 60s, declassified in 2004. Ben Livingston, the father of weather weapons, was interviewed on radio and TV by me. Report, oral evidence taken before the Science and Technology Committee 2010 in Congress dealing with the geoengineering that's going on. Here's another, unilateral geoengineering briefing notes. Again, this is put out by Stanford University, who first certified the weather control in 1968 with Ben Livingston, not declassified till the mid-2000s. Let's continue to another key document. 
indirect and semi-direct aerosol campaign. This is put out by the federal government and more than a dozen major universities dealing with how they are manipulating the weather currently and controlling it. You notice all the droughts, the rest of it. Just like I told you how the 1892, a Nobel Prize was won by Paul Crutzen on how to control the weather worldwide with these systems, okay? And you read what he got the prize for. Turned out this was work he did decades before. His plan got implemented. He won the prize because he, he claims it's to fix the ozone holes. Why aren't you telling the public then about this project if it's supposedly to fix the ozone holes? We've interviewed the physicists, the atmospheric experts. It's pure bull. They're changing our atmosphere. House of Commons, Science and Technology Committee, the regulation of geoengineering, 2010, calling for banning it, talking about how dangerous it is. There's UN treaties on it from 1979. But again, none of this exists, even though I'm giving you all the documentation. I told you in 1996 that the NSA spy grids were to be able to predict the future in mass movements and rig economies. Snowden told you that last year. I'm on record. I know what I'm talking about. We've done our homework. Here's another one put out by Harvard. Stratospheric injection of reflective aerosols and particles by means of aviation fuel additives. Bam, that's how they're departmentalizing it where people don't know what's happening.